A very warm welcome to you. This is the international service of Adventist World Radio in English from Pune. On our broadcast today, we bring music from Paul Hockey and Heritage Singers. A health message on the topic instead of meat. Followed by a study on nature. Ending our program with a thought from God's word on the topic I shall be satisfied. I'm Sharad. I'm Gladys. And you're listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. We start our program with the song Men of God. You've been listening to a song by Paul Hockip on Adventist World Radio, and now we have Nirmala, a nurse, talk on the topic instead of meat. Since the saturated fats began to be suspected of playing a part in producing hardening of the arteries, arteriosclerosis, and coronary heart disease, women have taken a second look at meatless menus to avoid the harmful effects of meat fats. Can good health and adequate nutrition be maintained on a meatless diet? They can. Multiplied thousands of women are doing that very thing. Let us check a few facts. It is true that meat protein is a good quality of protein, nutritionally speaking, but most people overload their system with it. The average person needs only about one ounce of protein daily. For good measure, two ounces is plenty. It is easy for him to get this amount and the proper kind of protein from sources other than meat. Eggs have an even better protein than meat. 
and milk protein is as good as meat protein. But let us look to the vegetable kingdom for high quality protein. Soya beans and garbanzos, that's chickpea, contain perfect protein. Most other legumes like beans, peas, lentils, peanuts and the like contain slightly less perfect proteins. Interestingly enough, the protein fractions that legumes lack are abundant in whole grains. The normal use of whole grain in the diet supplies that slight lack and balances the legume protein in a perfect protein. The resulting protein is every bit as nutritious as that of meat. Whole grain wheat has an excellent grade of protein. So do whole grain rice, whole grain rye and whole grain oats. Most grains are a little low in certain protein components, but the very things they need are supplied in abundance by legume proteins. Legume and whole grains complement each other into perfect proteins. Nuts are one of the finest sources of protein in the world. Many people eat them after they have been made hard to digest by deep fat frying and heavy salting. Try them fresh and without salt. Enjoy the natural nutty flavor. Fruits and leafy vegetables contain excellent proteins, although in small quantities. Potatoes contain a high quality protein. Hulled sunflower seed is a delicacy enjoyed by Russians and Americans. The Russians have used them for centuries. Sunflower seed contains 17% of high quality protein. Other sources of best protein are various food yeasts like brewer's yeast, torula yeast and others and wheat germ flakes. Wheat germ is the heart of the wheat berry, that living part destined to reproduce its kind. Those who eat only white bread miss the nutrition found in wheat germ. A fact many people are not aware of is that meat is one of the poorest sources of all minerals except phosphorus, which is also abundant in grains and legumes. A laboratory analysis of meat might reveal a fair iron content. Most meat contains much blood, but it is not in a form readily available to the human body. Dried beans contain three times as much iron as beef contains. Peas, wheat and oatmeal contain twice as much. Beef iron is only about 11% available to human body, whereas iron from vegetable sources is largely digestible and available as human nutrition. A few years ago, some nutritionists discovered what vegetarian physicians have long known, that meat in the diet will not prevent anemia. In the journal Nutrition Reviews, the author of a special article said, It comes as somewhat of a surprise to learn that a diet composed entirely of meat will regularly cause severe anemia in mice. Beef induced the most severe anemia, but pork had a similar effect. Chicken muscle was slightly less effective in causing anemia. People mistakenly believe that they need what they call good red meat to build red blood. The truth of the matter is that ordinary muscle meat is an exceedingly poor blood builder and in view of the animal experiments cited may actually be a cause of anemia. Food from the vegetable kingdom is still our best blood builder. The iron of whole wheat and bran is most effective for hemoglobin formation than lean beef, liver and egg yolk. People think that meat is a good source of vitamins. Actually meat, except for liver, kidney and entrails, is a poor source of vitamins. Muscle meat is a fair source of some of the B vitamins, but whole grains and legumes are far superior sources. Vitamin E is most abundant in seeds. Vitamins A and C are lacking in steak, but are amply supplied in fruits and vegetables. If you are looking for vitamins, look to the vegetable kingdom. The fat of meat is mostly of the saturated kind, which is being increasingly incriminated as a cause of hardening of the arteries. The natural fat of the vegetable kingdom is largely the unsaturated fat, which tends to prevent hardening of the arteries. 
an added dividend enjoyed by people who prefer a vegetarian diet. Most meat is highly seasoned by the cook and by the gourmet at the table. Many people would not enjoy the meat unless it was highly seasoned with salt, spices and fat. Study shows that it is the fat flavors of meat that people crave, not the protein. Food from the vegetable kingdom has its own delicate flavors and it needs little seasoning. When you choose a meatless way of life, you learn to enjoy natural food flavors. You avoid many diseases that are found in or are transmitted by meat. And you largely avoid the saturated fats which produce damage to the blood circulatory system. Some people regard vegetarianism as a passing fad. It is not a fad and it is not passing. It is a continuing way of life. It is the oldest diet known to the human race. When you purchase a new automobile or a scooter, it, is it not the part of wisdom to use the fuels and lubricants recommended by the designers? Should the human body receive less concentration than your new car? Are you looking for a diet to give you better health, a better way of life, less illness? Try a diet without meat. You will be pleased with the results. Thank you, Nirmala, for being on our program. Coming up next is a nature study entitled Mike Was My Mac Car, presented by Jennifer. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. Proverbs 15, 13 One day as I was walking with another missionary at the outdoor marketplace in Iquitos, Peru, I saw a large red macaw that called to us. The vendor called to us too, and we stopped. As I came close to this macaw, he put his foot to take my arm. Knowing that these birds have a strong beak that could clip off a finger in one bite, I refrained from putting my arm too close. The owner said, Go ahead, he won't hurt you. Hesitantly and cautiously, I put my arm over towards this big, beautiful bird and he put out his big foot and climbed onto my arm. He shuffled sideways up my arm until he could put his head and body against my chest. Then he began to move his head back and forth. I rubbed the feathers on the side of his head and it seemed that he and I struck up a special friendship. I had always wanted a macaw. Now was my opportunity. I gave the man the $7.50 he was asking for the bird and carried him home on my arm. I named him Mike. Mike was my bird. However, he loved my children too. He would go to them just like he did to me. If I was home on Sabbath, I'd take Mike out after church and walk around the mission compound with him on my arm. He liked that. Once I had been traveling for two weeks and arrived home late on Friday. On Sabbath, I had a full day with church duties and went by the cage only to say hi to Mike. My wife Millie said Mike seemed sick. He hadn't been acting like he usually did. On Sunday, I had to leave again, so I didn't take Mike out of his cage. Tuesday, I called home and Millie informed me that Mike had died on Monday. I talked to a vet and asked why Mike died. He said, one reason could be that Mike died of a broken heart because he missed you. And you showed him little attention while home that last time. Do birds really die of a broken heart? I don't really know, but I doubt it. Jesus died of a broken heart on the cross. He didn't want sin to separate you from him. He loved you. He died for your sins. Thank him today for his great love towards you. You heard a nature study by Jennifer on Adventist World Radio. 
the voice of hope for all for more details about our program you are welcome to write to us here's our mailing address adventist world radio post box number 17 pune 411001 maharashtra india stay tuned for our next song by heritage singers entitled keep your hand in the lords you can find a smile in a drop of rain you can keep the smile if you don't complain you can turn a frown into smiles again keep your hand in the lord Find the words that are right to say. Keep your hand in the Lord. The secret to happiness is living for others and loving everyone. My sisters and brothers, you can change a life. Just share a smile. Give a helping hand. a second mile you can live a life that's really worth while by keeping your hand in the lord's the secret to happiness is living for others and loving everyone like sisters and brothers you can change your life just share us Give a helping hand on the second mile You can live a life that's really worthwhile By keeping your hand in the hand of the man who loves shall be satisfied may god richly bless you as you listen to a message presented by pastor john prasad rao dear listener psalm 1715 says like this as for me i will behold thy face in righteousness i shall be satisfied when i awake with thy likeness shall we pray loving heavenly father as we meditate upon this verse and especially on i shall be satisfied help us as to how we can be satisfied in this life so that we can go home to be completely satisfied in thy presence because we ask it in jesus name amen dear listener it is difficult for a christian to pick out his favorite bible text it is like asking a devoted mother to designate her favorite child like attempting to pluck the most beautiful blossom in a 10 acre field of clover or like a farmer trying to select the outstanding head of wheat from his broad acres of ripened grain however there must be a favorite bible text even as one's guardian angel would seem to be a little nearer and dearer than any other of the countless radiant host of celestial beings if i have any favorite text it is the one quoted above looking back over the many years of my life i find many clouds some dark and lowering but there has also been much sunshine with many supremely happy days for instance on that sabbath afternoon when a mere lad i knelt out and for the first time prayed to god he made my soul so light and bright that i could hardly understand it but even on these brightest happiest days there was never complete satisfaction Every path has some sharp stones and every rose is set with thorns the brightest rainbow soon fades in the storm 
and we never quite reach the fabled pot of gold. There is a gravel in every shoe, and we cannot always walk on the sunny side of the street. There are bitter waters on the way to the promised land, and every man must sometime have his Gethsemane. A rich man built a modern home by the roadside, and offered to give it free to anyone who was entirely satisfied. Many of the poor and homeless looked at it longingly, but knew they could not qualify on the terms specified. Finally, a stranger appeared and confidently demanded the house. On being asked if he was perfectly satisfied with everything and everybody, himself included, he replied in the affirmative. The owner then asked him why he wanted the house. Then the stranger went away, a disappointed but a wiser man. There is no complete satisfaction this side of glory. But thank God, the glorious day is soon coming when I shall be supremely satisfied with everything and everybody and through all eternity. David was positive about this matter, and so may we be. There is no perhaps or maybe about this verse. The wicked might have their portion in this life, he declared, but as for me, I will behold thy face. I shall be satisfied. Let others do what they might, his mind was made up. Human ambition cannot rise higher than this. Human thought cannot soar above it. And supreme hope cannot desire more. And not only shall we be satisfied with him, but he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Thank God for that. I can easily understand how we shall be satisfied with him. But I cannot understand how he shall be satisfied with us. Only by faith can we grasp it. It is the mystery of godliness. I do not know how he can take my poor, sinful life and so cleanse and transform it that it will satisfy him. But he says he will do it. And I believe him. Earth might pour out it's wealth for me alone, and yet that would not satisfy my heart. I shall never be satisfied short of the divine likeness that shall be seen in that glorious day. Then, with no dimming veil between, my whole being shall thrill with a complete unalloyed satisfaction. These weary feet may soon cease their roaming. These tired eyes may ere long be closed. This active brain may by and by cease to function, and this once wicked but now willing heart may at last be stilled. But thank God, some day I shall see all heaven in his blessed face, and he shall see none of earth in mine. Satisfied? O oh, wonderful possibility! O oh, beautiful vision of visions, O oh, glorious day, speed thy coming. Meanwhile, by faith I am satisfied, as I shall daily behold the beautiful one, that I may myself become beautified. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the satisfaction that you are going to have in seeing us being saved into thy kingdom. Also, for the satisfaction that you are going to give to us, we pray that you would grant us this opportunity sooner than we expect and prepare us for that great event because we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John Prasadra, for sharing God's word. You are listening to the Voice of Hope from Pune, India. Friends, Here's a beautiful text from the Bible that says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. 
He lets me beside peaceful stream. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths. Bring honor to his name. Contentment is found in God's continual care for us. The opening verse of this beloved psalms reminds us that God guides us with his love, rest, protection, provision, and direction. Nothing else in this world can satisfy us as deeply and completely. With this, we come to the end of our program. You may wish to know more on God's word. Therefore, we would love to receive your letters on Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number Seventeen, Pune, Four One One Zero Zero One, Maharashtra, India. That is. Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number Seventeen, Pune, Four One One Zero Zero One, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on amc3 at vsnl dot com. That's amc3 at vsnl dot com. I'm Gladys, and I'm Sharad signing out from Adventist World Radio. Do join us again. Until then, may you have good health. and a happy home goodbye and god bless you